Good morning, Facebook friends. Gosh, I wish we could have music on Facebook Lives because uh, we would just have a party up in here every morning. Oh, it would be so much fun. Listen, I have a lot of words today. I did not go live uh, here in this page yesterday because I had, Mama had some stuff she had to take care of, okay? I just had some business that had to be um, taken care of, a lot to do, and so I could not go live. But I'm here this morning, and if you're here this morning, I'd love it if you said hello so I know Facebook's working like it should. All right, hey Tabitha, hey Mary, you're back. I'm back too, babe. I am back too. We are gonna talk about something um, that is an addiction amongst creative people slash dreamers slash entrepreneurs slash that sort of thing. We're gonna talk about an addiction that nobody's talking about, that nobody's talking about, but I'm gonna talk about it. Good morning, Gina. Good morning, Lucia. Grab your coffee, girls. But I do need you to understand I've got a lot of words and a lot of pep this morning, okay? Um, I'm on fire because I'm about to interview Dale Partridge this morning on a podcast. Um, I had a full night's rest. Uh, <laughs> I've had a great time of uh, quiet time and prayer this morning. And, um, and so I'm kind of revved up. I'm jazzed. Good morning, Anna. Good morning, Triesha. All right, you guys ready? So I'm going to ask you guys for some complete honesty, okay? Some complete honesty. There is an addiction that no one's talking about amongst creative people, amongst business owners, amongst the dreamers and the doers and the makers uh, that I think we need to chat about. And it's the fact that a lot of you are serial learners. Okay, you're serial learners. Not, not this kind of serial, by the way. I got out a prop because I hate props. And I just, I just wanted to see what it would feel like if I just brought a prop out and it feels gross and yucky. And so not that kind of cereal. Gosh, good morning. You guys are sharing like crazy already. But cereal as in, um, like a cereal killer. But you're a cereal learner. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Kayla. You are addicted to learning and it's hindering your business. You're addicted to gaining more information, getting more knowledge, learning from more people, hopping from listening to one podcast to another, to another, to another. And there is nothing wrong with that. Listen, when I decided to go online four years ago, I became a sponge and I was like, yes, Lord, teach me all the things, show me all the people, get me on all the email lists because I need to learn all the stuff. Okay. So I went into like hard foot on the gas learning mode for about two years until I realized I was in a constant holding pattern, pattern of just gathering information, gathering more information, learning more from this person because this person's smart and learning more from this person because that person's equally smart, doing it a different way, learning from them too, grabbing another course. How many of you are course addicts? Huh? How many of you are course addicts? How many of you will admit to buying every single course that's out there and finishing zilch? And finishing zilch. When you are addicted to the learning process, okay? Because I love to learn, you guys. I love to learn. I'm trying to find a hip hop class as a 46 year old in Kansas City that I can go learn from. I love learning, okay? I'm learning how to kayak. I love learning. My, my Audible, which is what I use for all of my books because mama ain't got time to read because when I try to read a book at night, I'm falling asleep. Do we have any other like 10 o'clock to sleepers? I got to go to sleep. So if I try to read a book, I'm out on page three. It's just, it's just, I can't even make it to three sometimes. Okay, so I love to learn. The problem is, is that when you are learning, 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 Nothing's changing in your business because the change doesn't come from the learning that even this applies to life and business. My friends, the change comes in the doing the change comes in the applying the crap that you're taking in to your life and your business. It matters not how much head knowledge you have. It does not matter if you understand the value of an email list. Does not matter if you understand the Facebook algorithms and how it does Facebook's lives. It does not matter if you understand the new Instagram story strategy. Doesn't matter any of that. Doesn't matter if you have figured out how to do Tailwind, um, you figured out how to do Facebook Messenger bots, and, um, and, and you're, you've got a following behind you. 
Okay, it does, none of that matters if you're not taking the stuff that you're learning and actually like putting on the brakes, stopping, and doing something with it. And doing something with it. I'm gonna tell you something that will change your world if you will just if you'll just hear me, okay? If you'll just hear me. Now this doesn't apply to everyone, but it's gonna feel like a sucker punch for those of you that it applies to. What's that show? Um, Tosh Point oh, not, so, not that I ever would watch that very unchristlike show, <laughs> but I have a time or two. Dude's funny, but he's wrong. Okay, <laughs> inappropriate. Don't watch Tosh Point oh. Here's what I'm saying. He always says something like, "This gonna hurt a little." Okay, this gonna hurt a little. You learning is you stalling. You learning is you stalling. You keep thinking you need to learn just a little bit more before you can start your, your side business or figure out a little more about this before you can do this or um, you know gather some more facts, gather some more information. No, you are lying to yourself, babe. I love you. Lisa says you are in my inner circle and you're overwhelmed with the information. Lisa, you know that if you're in my coaching group, you know what I say, your overwhelm is your responsibility. I love everyone in there enough to tell them there's a lot of information here. Take what you need and get the crap out. Even out of my own group. Like don't quit my group. I'm not saying that. But to consistently just be absorbing more information will teach you a couple of things that wow, you're figuring some stuff out. You're learning some stuff. And boy, do you have a lot more to learn. I mean, all the time, my friends, that's what I think. I think, oh crap, I got so much more to learn. Woo! I got so much more to learn. And so constantly like immersing yourself in more data and more information and more books and more podcasts and more Facebook lives and more email lists and all that, it will make you feel like you're drowning in overwhelm and you need to check out of some of it. You need to check out of some of it, Lisa. You know what you're capable of, so take what you need and just ditch the rest. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of concrete examples of things you can do to lessen your overwhelm and get to where you stop just learning and start applying. If you don't take some of what you've learned over the last couple of years, for some of you, it's been a decade of you gathering facts, learning more, taking a class, figuring stuff out. Baby, you don't need to learn more. You need to go do something with it. You need to do something with it. You are stalling and I love you. But you learning more is you stalling. And it is, you're shooting yourself in the foot. And for some of you, the thing that will um, uh, light a fire under you like none other is when I say to people, your family's future depends on some of you women to step up and quit stalling. Mm -hmm. Your family's future depends on you to quit learning and start doing. Leslie, I know you, you don't know what you don't know. And sometimes when you're doing it, you don't know until somebody points it out to you. So I love you enough to point it out to you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you some concrete examples of things that you can do to quit just learning, okay? Number one, and I've had to do all these in my own business, you guys, all right? Because once you're... Once your eyes are opened in the business world to the possibilities, and if you really love what you're doing, I mean, you guys, I love what I get to do. I love coming on here and talking to you every day. I love the fact that I'm about to interview Dale Partridge, whose business has made $30 million. He opened up for Mark Zuckerberg at the Facebook conference last year, and I get to have him on the phone in the next couple hours. I'm giddy. I'm giddy like a schoolgirl. okay? I get to go do videos for Hobby Lobby. I get to spend all day Friday filming for my creator's roadmap that comes out next month. I love what I do. I love it. I love it. So when you love what you do, it's easy to want to just take more in, take more in, take more in. But the taking more in is not what's going to change the trajectory of your family and your family's financial future for some of you. Okay? All right. Hang on. Ready? Here you go. This is going to hurt a little. All right. Pick two or three groups that you're in online and get out of the rest of them. Get out of the rest of them. You don't need to be in 500 groups. There is actually a group app. Did you know this? Hey, Chantel. Chantel's in my coaching group. Thank you, babe. Blessed to be a blessing. Absolutely. Um, 
there's a group app. Okay, so go to your app store and just look up Facebook groups app and see what comes on, okay? And it'll show you every group that people have added you to without you even asking to. Come on, you makeup ladies. Come on, you legging ladies. Stop adding us to your groups. We love you, but that's not the way to do business. That is not the way to do business. It's not the way to make sales. If I wanted to be in your mascara group, I would have added myself to your mascara group. I love you. So when you figure out how many groups you're in with that app, you're going to be like, dang, girl, I did not sign up for 426 groups. Get out of the groups. Lord have mercy. You don't need to be in all those groups. Because here's what's happened, ladies. Your phone's dinging all the time. All right, and you only have the capacity for so much on any given day to give your attention to. And while your phone's dinging that another group had a post come up and another group had a post come up and another, you are like bouncing around like a weirdo. I, I, guilty right here. I've had to take myself out of so many things. Not because there wasn't great value there, but when you're learning from too many areas and you're consuming too much stuff, and you're getting downloaded from all these different places. It'll make you feel like a nut job. So God doesn't intend you for you to just keep learning and just consuming, consuming, consuming. He very much expects you to take something with that information and execute. Implementation always trumps contemplation. Doing it always trumps thinking about it. Thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. You want to know how you wake up and run a marathon? You decide one day that you're going to run a marathon. You actually start doing the things that prepare you for a marathon. You quit thinking about just running a marathon. And you actually do the things that position you to execute it. Yes, Furniture is Art. There's a group app. It's on your cell phone. Go to your app store and look up Facebook group apps. Okay, so get out of a bunch of those groups, even if they're good. Even if they're good. Stay in a couple that you can really get some concrete stuff from that you feel like you found your people and ditch the rest. Okay? Free up your inbox. Unsubscribe to a ton of stuff. To a ton of stuff. There's even, um, what's the app called? And some of you might know. Some of you might know what the app is called. Where you, um, it'll tell you everything you're subscribed to. So you can quit getting all the Bath and Body Works emails. You can quit getting um, Victoria's Secret because there is no secret. Um, you can quit getting, you know what I'm talking about. 500 marketing emails from this business coach and this business coach and this business coach. It's not that they don't have great value, you guys, but your your attention is all over the place. Yes, unroll.me. Thank you, Stacey Haynes, who's in my coaching group. God bless you. Unroll.me. Unroll yourselves. For reals. You don't need to read more email. What you need to do is start emailing your list. What you need to do is start writing your own emails and quit digesting 500 of them in your inbox every day. Okay? Unsubscribe. Get out of groups. Turn off another podcast during the day. Listen, I am committed. Jason and I feel just a really holy conviction that um, I'm to, you know, when the kids were small, I would stay home and raise babies. But then I had this great business going that I didn't feel like God wanted me to give up either, which is why I figured out how to work from home be a work from home mom, raise my kiddos while still building a six figure business at the same time. Um, and so that was our conviction. Our conviction is also that I'm to get the kids on the school bus every day and be done with work every day so that when they get off the bus, I'm here. That's our personal convictions as a family, okay? Which means I have from 8.15 in the morning to about 2.33 o'clock every day to bust butt, okay? I cannot be listening to podcasts during that time. Will they help me? Absolutely. But is that what's going to grow my business to listen to another person's podcast? No, no guys. And it's not going to grow yours either. I have a podcast. It has a new episode today. I'm talking to Gina Luker on my podcast today about building a business while dealing with this, this, what's the word? Debilitating anxiety. For those of you who have any level of anxiety, you have no excuse. Go listen to my podcast today. You can find it on the podcast app, but Gina Luker's story is amazing. One million hits on her website a month. Um, she's bipolar, deals with severe anxiety, and that girl is rocking her business, so there's no excuses. So I have a podcast I'd very much love you to listen to, but my podcast is not going to grow your business. It'll give you ideas. It'll encourage you. It'll feel like one big rah-rah session. It'll feel like Jen is your biggest cheerleader, which I want you to know I am. I'm your biggest cheerleader. 
But a cheerleader also needs to look you in the face, I'm gonna look real close, be like, girls, girls, your family's future depends on some of you getting off the sofa, reading more emails and listening to podcasts and doing something for your own business today. I love you enough to tell you the truth. There is an addiction to learning and there is stalling when it comes to executing. <laughs> Lori says you love my piece of furniture. It's on my blog, babe. Um, what is your question here, Teresa? When you got laid off from your job, how did you transition to your own business? This is how I did it, Teresa. I said to myself, I will do anything not to have to go back to a desk job. I'll do anything. I mean, short of robbing a bank and, you know, that sort of nonsense that could end me up in jail. But I will do anything not to have to go back to that desk job where I was dying in a cubicle, not using any of my God-given gifts, and slowly wasting away because I had people that just um, expected me to stay in a really good paying job or find another really good paying job in that industry. As many of you know, and I've told you before, I graduated top of my class with a computer degree um, at 30. So... Um, I got laid off at 31 and started my painting business, which for a lot of people was like, what is she doing? She has a really good job with PDOs, with PDOs. And she gets three weeks of vacation a year and she has a pager. What's she talking about this painting nonsense? That was what some of the people were thinking. I sure hope she can make it. And in my head, all I was thinking was, Lord, I'll do whatever necessary to not have to go back to that. You're giving me an opening. I asked you, this is what happened. I literally would pray, Lord, I don't want to be at this job anymore. I want to start my own thing. I don't know how. And then I got laid off. Now, some of you would look at that and go, I got laid off. Shoot, better go find another job. Lord, help me find another job. No, the reality was the Lord gave me the opening. A lot of times the opening from the Lord is not going to look like what you think it is, my friends. I didn't see a layoff coming. And I boo-hooed about it for several days until I got my wits back about me. So when he gives you that opening and it does not look like what you think it will, because I did not anticipate losing that really great paying job that I had. That was the opening though, and I had to take it. I had to take it. So here's my encouragement for some of you today. Don't download another book. Don't listen to another podcast. Don't even open up your email box today. Do something today that's going to change the direction of your business right now. Right now. Right now. For those of you who have followed me for any length of time, you'll know that I also say a lot of times your craft is just your catalyst. It's just God's way of inching you into what he really wants you to be doing in life. You think it's about sign making. Baby, it ain't about sign making. It ain't about sign making because the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to be making signs and then all of a sudden you're going to start teaching women how to make signs. And when you teach a woman how she can make some money for her family, you have the ability to help her change her entire family's future. There are some women that if they could just make $500 a month by painting a piece of furniture and selling it on Craigslist, it would completely take so much stress off of her husband of having to bring home all the finances. It would also teach her little daughter who's sitting there watching her paint in the garage that mama's got some talent. Mama has some dreams and that mama can do things while raising babies simultaneously at the same time to the glory of God for the good of the family and not feel guilty about it. Okay. It's not just about what you guys are making. Expand your thinking beyond that. So you start sign making and then eventually you start, start teaching other people how to make signs and then you start talking about your business and then you start getting asked to like speak on stages about your business and then on and on and on and on. Your craft baby girl is just your catalyst to something else. You're not staying there forever. You're thinking too small. I love you. So today you're going to turn some stuff off. When we get off of this Facebook, you're going to share it. Or you're going to tag your girlfriend who needs to hear it. Or you're going to just make sure that you've shared it so that when you need to listen to it next week, you're going to be like, dang, Jen got all up in my business and I probably need to re-listen to that. That way you have it. You can go back and re-listen to it. But you're not going to download another book off of Audible today. You're not going to do it. You're going to commit to doing something that is actually going to change your business today. It's either finally starting that website or it's posting on your Facebook page consistently, or it's 
contacting someone that you can have start working with you or it's finding a VA who can handle your emails for you or it's hiring a brand manager who can help get your name out there to some other businesses the things that sometimes us women spend our times doing literally are that we get caught up in the things that we can check off easily, right? So what can I do? What can I check off easily today? Well, I've got, you know, 40 emails in my inbox overnight. Let me whip through these bad boys. Okay, your emails are not what's going to grow your business. You know what that next hard thing is. You know what that next hard thing is that's going to take your business to the next level. You're avoiding it by learning more. Maybe you don't need to learn more. You need to do more. You don't need to learn more. You know enough. Somebody tweet that. You know enough. You are not giving yourself credit for how far you've come and how much you already know. Plus, God equips you along the way. So quit learning. Start doing. I love you. Decor Marino joined my group. I am so glad. Bless you for being there. What else can I specifically help you with this morning before I get off here? And thank you for whoever has shared this because we've got almost 500 women on here. And um, if I can help change the direction of one woman's life, then my job is done. And then I'm super excited. This is what, this is what jumps me out of bed in the morning. Deb says she needed to hear this today. Leslie says it's like you're talking straight to me. God's good like that, Leslie. Yeah, the, okay, so Ellen, virtual assistant, she never thought of learning as an addiction. Well, because think about how you feel when you're taking in more stuff and you're feeling empowered and you're feeling, you know, um, encouraged and you're feeling motivated and you're feeling smart and all of those things are great. All of those things are great. But it's the executing of what you've already learned that stops people in their tracks every time. Sometimes we just simply use learning as a stalling mechanism, as a way of not having to step into our power and into our position that God wants us to be in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. Nancy's getting off Facebook now and getting started. You're welcome. You're welcome, Deanna. <laughs> um, Mary Lou, I have a lot of direct salespeople in my group. I have some makeup people. I have somebody that sells dog food. I have real estate people in my group. Who else? I have Lularo leggings in my group. So absolutely. Oh, Dana, I'm glad you're taking her class. Yay. Andrew needed to hear this today. I'm so glad. My job is done. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you got my ebook, Stephanie. I'm so glad on prayers for your business. Fantastic. All right, bless you guys. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to end this here, okay? Um, and the reason I'm going to end it here, and thank you, is it Jolie Holmes Jewels? You joined my inner circle a couple of days ago. Yay! Excited and then scared. You've been on a roller coaster. Hey, when you get in there, listen, this is what I tell everybody. Your overwhelm is your responsibility. Take what you need and then get out of my group. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't look at the 30 posts that come through there a day because it'll make you want to just, you know, pow, It'll overwhelm the heck out of you. And overwhelmed creatives quit. They don't quit my class, but they quit creating. They quit dreaming. They quit thinking. They quit um, taking that next step because they're overwhelmed. So control your overwhelm, ladies. What will help you with the overwhelm is when you back out of all those groups, you back out of all those email lists, you quit downloading more podcasts. Listen, I have about 5,462 podcasts that I want to listen to. I have about 12 books in my Audible list. We're doing a, a blog post for you guys, by the way, on my 10 recommended um, business books. Um, but I won't listen to all of those until I'm driving, until I'm traveling, until uh, I have time, and now the pool is closed for the year, but I listen to podcasts and things sometimes at the pool. A lot of times I'll put in a headset if I have to go to the grocery store because I hate grocery shopping, and I also um, just am not big on idle chatter um, in the grocery line. I'm not trying to be snotty at all. I just, I have stuff to do. And so um, that'll help you with your overwhelm. It'll help you. Do you have people who want to become a writer? Yes, Leslie uh, Fear is in my group, and she is a writer. She is published. I think she's even on this um, thing here this morning. What was your name? Um, I missed your name, baby. I'm so sorry. Oh, Michelle. Yes, Michelle. We have writers in the group. And Linda says, you've been learning, and it's procrastinating. Absolutely. You're stalling. You're stalling, and I love you. 
Gail says, what if you want to start a business, you're just not sure about it, you need advice, and you're very smart. Well, Gail, here's a couple of indicators if a business will work. Are other people already doing it, or is your idea, you know, uh, you don't see a lot of underwater basket weavers, and the reason you don't is because people really won't pay for that. It's not a, it's not a good business to set up. So one of the things I suggest is go to Pinterest. See if you can find some information on Pinterest by searching on the topic that you're thinking about starting a business on. If it's something creative that's making, more than likely, yes, it's something that absolutely will fly. So I would have to know what it is that you're thinking about. Um, hey, thanks, Sheena. I just put on my Instagram story the, uh, the gel that I tried today. I had to have big hair for, for podcast today. Um, Sierra says you signed up for my inner circle last night, but you don't know how to access it. You should have been, uh, listen, friends, let's be honest. I have two assistants, right? So my assistant, Vicki, who is my angel, you know, um, she's been on vacation since last Wednesday. She came back to work at like 1239, I think was the first email I got back from her in the morning last night. And I'm like, oh, praise Jesus, Vicki's back. My other one, Emily, has been displaced by Hurricane Irma. Um, since last week, and she still does not have full Wi-Fi access to email. Can't return my texts, and um, you know these are first world problems. I know. And so, um, if you have joined my coaching group and have not got information from us, hang tight. Okay, hang tight. Today we're catching up on all those emails. Vicky's back. <laughs> Give that girl a raise. Um, awesome. All right, bless you guys. My son just walked in and said, oh, you're talking to that lady. Ask if her daughter liked the one and only Ivan book. She liked it so much. Janelle, tell your son. Oh, your son's right there. Hey, son, goody. Um, Ava loves the book, the one and only Ivan, so much that she has to do a book report where she makes like a game, and she's doing it on that book. She also likes the book so much that we had checked it out from the library, and she conned me into going to Barnes & Noble the other day. Now, listen, I'm sitting here telling you guys we have an addiction to learning and knock it off, but we're grown-ups. When you're nine and you ask mom if we can go get some new books at Barnes and Noble, you just nod your head yes, because I want my kids to love to read. So um, yes, we went to Barnes and Noble, bought her the hard copy of the one and only Ivan this week, plus a couple other ones. There was a Judy Moody, I think, and something else. And so I am, um, I always am up for buying her new books. I've trained her to say, Ava, where do smart girls go on Friday nights? Smart girls go to the library. Smart girls go to the library. So, yep, Kari, so glad you're in my inner circle, girlfriend. Glad that you're there. All right, bless you guys. Get to work, okay? We'll be back tomorrow. Bye-bye.